Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of a case of squamous cell carcinoma of the glans penis. And let's just take an overview to orientate ourselves. This is the glans penis and this is the tumor. The urethral opening can be seen here. And let's take a closer look. We can see that this is the area of the tumor. It appears as a fungating mass. And we are not able to see the cut surface here, but I will show some examples later. We do not see the foreskin here. This is a gross appearance of squamous cell carcinoma of the penis. Let's learn a bit more about squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is a malignant epithelial tumor of the penis and it arises from the glands itself, as you can see here, or the inner foreskin. And this is more common in Asia and Africa compared to North America. It usually occurs in middle-aged to the slightly elderly age group. It occurs with greater frequency in non-circumcised males or if a circumcision occurs at a later age, after 10 years of age, or if there's a background of phimosis or paraphimosis. It is also associated with HPV infection, which is quite similar to cervical cancer. And also if there is a background or history of lichen sclerosis or balanitis xerotica obliterans. There is also a connection with smoking. Clinically, this usually appears as a mass, as we saw, or sometimes an ulcer on the glands, and it may involve the foreskin. It may also present as enlarged inguinal lymph nodes, and this is not necessarily always due to metastasis. It can be because of infection. And in cases of severe phimosis, a mass or ulcer may actually be occult and not picked up until later. This tumor tends to metastasize to inguinal nodes and also distant sites, including liver, lung, and bones. Prognostically, it depends on the stage, and depth of invasion is a very important factor. The histologic type also makes a difference. Some of the types, such as sarcomatoid squamous cell carcinoma or basaloid squamous cell carcinoma, incur a worse prognosis. And of course, it also depends on the histologic grade and the presence of lymphovascular or perineural invasion. Usually the treatment is excision with or without inguinal lymph node dissection. So here are some other examples and for the gross features, this tumor can either spread in a vertical manner so it invades deeply or it can spread more superficially, similar to melanoma in a way. And the superficial spreading growth pattern often remains fairly superficial in the lamina propria or the superficial layers of the corpus spongiosum, whereas in the vertical growth pattern, the invasion is more deep. There is also a verusiform squamous cell carcinoma, which basically is a cauliflower-like exophytic warty um, papillomatous tumor mass. Microscopically, and there will be a separate video detailing the microscopic features on a virtual slide, the commonest histologic type is just the classical invasive squamous cell carcinoma, and there may or may not be keratinization. So here is an example. You can see the tumor is here. This is the epithelium of the glans penis, and this is the penile urethra. And we can see that it is invading into the lamina propria and corpus spongiosum. Over here, we can see this tumor has some degree of keratinization. And the subtypes include verisiform, basaloid, sarcomatoid, and anaplastic. There may be a background of intraepithelial neoplasia or other conditions such as lichen sclerosis, which we mentioned is a risk factor. And lymphovascular invasion or perineural invasion are frequent. In summary, this is an example of a squamous cell carcinoma of the penis. And this tumor is seen as a fungating mass that is arising in the glans penis and in this instance it is not directly involving the penile urethra. This tumor tends to metastasize to the inguinal lymph nodes and it is a malignant tumor. This virtual pathology specimen is taken from PathWeb which is our free online resource. You can scan the QR code to learn more 
and you can also register for free and the link is in the video description. Thank you.